Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, uh, where I do my darndest to ask and answer your scuba diving questions. Uh, so if you do have any scuba diving questions, uh, then pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Use this Ask Mark hashtag, get your question featured in an up and coming video. But in the meantime, I do type out a uh, response so you do get an answer, as the community does as well. So if you do see any unanswered questions uh, or even answered questions, uh, if I've written something wrong and you uh, you think otherwise, uh, by all means contribute. Uh, let them know your thoughts down in the comments section. Um, this week I'm answering a question about neoprene alternatives from Belana. So Blana says, hey Mark, thank you for all of your videos over the years. They've been a huge help. You are more than welcome. A uh, bit of an odd situation. I travel full time with just a carry-on. So everything I own has to fit and both size and weight are a consideration. I dive mostly warmer waters with a backplate and wing. Because I'm trying to streamline what I bring a bit, Rather than my normal 3 mil shorty, would a shark skin slash lava core full suit be a good option to replace the combination of that and my rash guard? Thank you for everything that you do for the scuba community. You are welcome. Yes, neoprene alternatives such as lava core, uh, shark skin, thermocline, uh, there's quite a few out there. Most divers find them equivalent kind of to a two mil wetsuit but they also have a few added benefits uh, the main one being that they're neutrally buoyant which i just adore as opposed to neoprene which obviously floats and you need extra lead to help you get down these neoprene alternatives they're neutrally buoyant you don't need that added lead so they're perfect the only downside is is that most divers find them equivalent to about a two mil um, it's, it's really hard to like measure and test it because it depends on how much you feel the cold and everything and it's really hard to compare. You can't just go for a dive in a 3 mil, take it off, put on one of these and then see how you feel because it, you know, it, it's, really, it, it's a guessing game. And most divers tend to find they're not quite as warm as a 3 mil but they're pretty darn close. And replacing a 3 mil shorty with a neoprene full suit would be a pretty good choice. The material itself is nice and light. Um, the only thing that I could find down here, I know I've got a, um, a shirt somewhere, uh, but I could only find a sock, I'm afraid. I've got a lot of scuba kit knocking around. Uh, I really need to organize it at some stage. Um, but incredibly light so for lightweight traveling and like packing it away they do pack down nice and small and nice and light as well so yes it probably would be practical for your example everything has to fit in carry on um, going from a three mil shorty with a rash vest to a full suit yeah probably would be a pretty accurate comparison um if anything it might be a touch warmer uh, but it also has the added protection if you graze up against something uh, i mean i've bumped up against some fire coral before and that sucks for uh, for a few weeks uh, depending on how bad the um the hit is but it protects you from that, as well as the stinging plankton and, uh, and jellyfish and all that kind of stuff, because it's protecting your arms. It's also protecting you from the sun uh, because we're very exposed, especially when we're on the surface. You've got all those UV rays bearing down. So one, you don't have to put sunscreen on, or at least as much sunscreen. Uh, so that's better for the environment. Um, but also, yeah, you're getting this UPF 50 plus protecting you um, from from all sorts for anyone who doesn't know uh neoprene alternative materials uh this is fourth element thermocline uh, i think this exact one they just call the fin sock um it's a three layer material on the inside you have this soft and uh, and fluffy layer so that goes against it can go straight against your bare skin you don't have to wear anything underneath this uh, it's meant as a base layer you can wear it by itself to act kind of as a two mil. You can wear it underneath your existing wetsuit if there's enough space, obviously, um, and that helps to boost it. So it's like a wetsuit undersuit, or you can use it as a dry suit undersuit. 
it's not really what it's designed for but it does the job and it works when wet because this fluffy layer is it's kind of like toweling so it absorbs that water and just like a wetsuit it stops it from moving around your body so it kind of warms up and uh, and it prevents that like flushing action um, which cools you down so it traps that warm water against your skin it also wicks moisture away i think the original purpose of this style of material was for like surface water sports like surfing in colder waters and like stand up paddleboard that kind of stuff um so the main focus was to make it a bit more breathable compared to neoprene which can be a bit stifling um especially when you're not in the water but you're just on the surface so they came up with these kind of neoprene alternatives you have a mid layer which is a semi-permeable plastic and that's breathable so it allows like sweat to come out which is nice in warmer waters um, but it helps to cut the wind out so when you're wet when you're on the surface and the breeze is coming through it doesn't chill you to the core uh, it does protect you and then you have this protective stretchy outer layer which just like a normal wetsuit outer layer protects the softer materials from damage when you bend and flex it doesn't rip uh, you've got that protective outer shell and yeah the the whole thing it's probably about two mil thick no probably not even that maybe about one mil depending on how much you, uh, you squeeze it it's a it's a thin layer but it's still thick enough to protect you from a lot of marine bumps and scrapes and stings and stuff um so yeah i reckon it would be a good alternative for you uh nice and light or at least lighter compared to neoprene uh it's stretchy as well there's quite a few variants out there uh yeah you mentioned uh lava core and uh shark skin yeah fourth elements make um make thermocline uh there's probably a few others out there and going through different names it's fairly similar. I don't think I've ever noticed one to be substantially better than the other. Um, it's just down to style, cut, the kind of the overall fit, and, um, and yeah, otherwise they're fairly similar. But yes, they, they do work quite well. As I said, most divers find them equivalent to like a, a two mil, uh, two mil of neoprene as far as like warmth and protection goes. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, I, do, I do like neoprene alternatives and they're great if you have a neoprene allergy because it's just material, it's just like a nylon. Um, it doesn't actually say on this, unfortunately. It just says, yeah, do not, do not iron. Why would you try and iron this? Um, anyway, yeah, it's not neoprene. Some divers have a, uh, an allergy to certain types of neoprene, usually the petroleum-based neoprenes. Um, but yeah, as an alternative for diving in warmer waters, then yeah, this, uh, this like thermocline or um, uh, alternative um, shark skin lava core is, uh, is, is yeah, a very good alternative. Uh, any other questions, by all means, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Use the Ask Mark hashtag to get it featured in an up and coming video. Uh, but yeah, you do still get a, a response as soon as I can. Uh, otherwise, remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com, check out our magazine uh, that goes round globally. Uh, so you can check that out and remember to subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.